the axiom of continuity is a principle in mathematics that we take, well, as an axiom, means we take it on faith. It, it basically, basically describes the real number system as a system that has no holes. That is, no matter how much you zoom into the real number system, it will always have it will always be continuous. It will always have nothing missing. You're not going to trip through it because you zoomed in deep enough. In real life, when you zoom into any kind of surface, if you zoom in deep enough, the magnification get big enough that you start seeing all kinds of jaggedness, no matter how much it start, how smooth it started out being. But in mathematics, we believe by the axiom that that will not happen. We'll always have something there. Nothing will be missing. Nothing will be out of place. So. What is the axiom of continuity? It, it is presented in a very, very unusual way. Suppose that all real numbers are separated into two collections, so that which we call L and R. Okay, so all real numbers are divided into two lumps, the L lump and R lump, which stands for left and right, by the way. So all real numbers are divided into two collections in such a way that every number is either in our L or in R. In other words, they have no common, uh, no common members. And each collection co contains at least one thing. So there's no empty set here. And then if A is in L and B is in R, then A is less than B. That means everything in the left is going to be less than everything in the right. Now, suppose we divide the real number that way. In real life, we know that we can't do so. And uh, then there is a number C. Then there exists. There exists a number C such that all numbers that are less than C are in L, such that A will be less than C. And then similarly, all numbers bigger than C will be in R. Okay, that's the condition. Everything that's less than is here and bigger than is there. Now C is called the cut, as you can, uh, which is fairly intuitive. C itself might belong to L and R. We're not really interested. Now first we have to prove that C is um, C is unique. C is unique because if you have, let's say if you have two C's, okay, say so if you have C1 and C2. Then, you, if that were true, you can come up with the average of C1 and C2 by doing C1 plus C2. And where does this belong? Does it go into L or does it go into R? Because it's bigger than C1, it has to go into R. Because anything bigger than the cut, it belongs to the R side. And because it's less than C2, it has to go to L. Because anything less than L, less than the cut, belongs to the L side. And then, which is not possible because we already said they do not have any common numbers. So that's uh, as a result, we know the cut has to be unique. Now, next thing we're going to do is do something with the, the axiom of continuity, which normally there isn't much to do with it. It's just something we designed to so that the real number system is logically complete, and we know what we're thinking. Mathematicians are very, very big on knowing exactly what we're thinking about. But next, we're going to do something with the axiom of continuity by using it to prove something that's point blank obvious. Theorem 1. Let A and B be positive numbers, positive real numbers. So A and B are positive, positive. And then, then there exists a natural number n such that B is less than NA. In other words, it doesn't matter how small a might be, you can pick a big enough n such that n times a is going to be bigger than b. Now, in real life, you can do that very quickly because all you need to do is just figure out what b over a is. Remember, a and b are positive, so we don't have to worry about zero here. So this, act, this is a value of some kind, and then you just choose n that's bigger than b over a, and that will satisfy the work. But we're not going to do it the easy way. We're going to do it with do the proof uh, by contradiction using the axiom of continuity. And here's how we're going to do it. Now, how are we going to do this? 
Okay, now we'll set up the axiom continuity and we'll set up those two groups, L and R. Okay, so for the proof, we'll divide the real number system into two sets and define L this way. Now, first we suppose, suppose the false. Uh, suppose this statement isn't true. That is, uh, <coughs> suppose that we'll assume that NA is less than or equal to b for all n okay so so it doesn't matter which n you pick it's always going to be less than b let's just say for all positive integer n and then we will um define we'll define a cut we'll define there's a we want two groups okay there's l l will be all the numbers of x x uh such that x is less than x is less than na for some n and then and then we will also and then r will consist of all the numbers that is not in l okay in other words r is consists of numbers such that y and y is bigger than or equal to na and that's for all n. Now we know that uh, every number is either in in x or in l because <coughs> that's how we de define it. It's because every number has to be either less than or bigger than or equal to. There's no other kind. Number two, we, we want to make sure that nothing's empty since we know that a is inside l. We'll write it here. A is in, in L because A is less than NA if you pick N equals to 2, for example. And then, of course, B is in R, and that's because of the, the supposition, because B is bigger than NA for all for all N. So B is in, in R, so we don't have any empty sets. So that's uh, satisfied. <coughs> and then the third condition is that the members of L has to be smaller than the M members of every member of of r <clears throat> so if x is in l and y is in y is in r then we have this situation x is less than n a okay from there which is less than equal to y because n a is less than y for all n x is only less than some n but this is less than all n is less than y which which proves that x is less than y for every for every x in l and every y in r So that's good. And then and then we got our cut by the axiom. It's the axiom says we have a cut. Okay, a cut number C. <coughs> so there exists by the axiom a cut number C. And and then and then we observe this. Okay. Well let's consider the number NA for some n. Doesn't matter. Where does NA belong? Does it belong to L or does it belong to R? Well, NA is this right here. NA, well, NA, a number NA is going to be less than something called N plus 1A. And, and therefore, NA is belong to L. It's in L. Because N plus 1A is the same as NA. It's just, uh, N is just a natural number. And so it's N plus 1A. And that means NA is in L, okay? And next, therefore, and because it's in L, it has to be, therefore, NA is less than C. Because less than or equal to C, we don't really care the equal part, but we'll write it down anyway. The point is, it's less than the, less than or equal to the cut. And then, Well, if any is, uh... anyway, keep going. And by the same principle, then here's a weird part. N plus 1A is also less than or equal to C. Because we don't know what N is. So N might as well just be N plus 1. It's just a natural number. 
Now at less than C, pardon me. Now here's where things get interesting. Now if you rewrite this statement right here, then we have, you just do the basic algebra here, less than C minus A. Now, okay, that's fine. But get this, this N is just a random N. <coughs> This is all n's, okay? Any n will satisfy this condition. Now, if that's the case, we conclude that c minus a is an r because, because this satisfies the r condition. See, for all, of, all values such that n a, for all n that n a is less than a certain value, then uh, that value is in R. So this implies C minus A has to belong to R. But of course, because C is the cut, C minus A is be belongs to L because C minus, A, C minus A, of course, is less than C. And so, which means C minus A belongs to L, which now we have arrived as a, as, at a contradiction because because L and R cannot have common members. So that's how we prove this uh, very basic fact. It's by a very complicated, well, not too compli com complicated, but somewhat convoluted way of doing things. But it's convoluted, and yet it's neat. And that's that.